49th house party. Could MTV be in your front room tonight? Hello there. <laughs> and can you understand little Kevin? Yeah, not a favourite toy. Yeah, no, very sweet. They show Marcus. Sweets, sweets. There's a surprise for someone here in the great house, and Susan George will have the time of her life winning a gotcha. There's lots, lots more in the big, big party. <laughs> had show 96, we've had show 97, show 98, and tonight! And someone said Cornetto. Do you mind, please? <laughs> We're almost there. Can we get rid of this now, please? Because we've got a party tonight. <laughs> star of NTV. When I say that Susan George was in a state of shock throughout her gotcha, I really do mean it. And last week, of course, we had Grab a Grandpa. Well, <laughs> this week, can we do anything as silly as this? I, <laughs> I promise you that the, I threw myself into it last week. I promise you we can do something even sillier than that. Although, <laughs> although this week it has a strong cultural feel, a strong cultural feel to it this week, because we are going to the Grabba Grand Opera. Yes. Oh, excuse me. How do they do that? I mean, that was perfectly obvious to all of us that it was, in fact, a doorbell. The doorbell at the Great House at Crinkley Bottom. But if you look at the door, I'm sorry, I can't see a doorbell at all. So, how do they do that? <laughs> This. That's how they do it. Look, excuse me, what, what are you going on about? Now, I've got another little gem for you. You see, the thing is, Noel Evans, during the course of his house party, has to say lots of things. He has lots of lines. And although he has a massive brain, I understand, he can't store all that information. So he needs a little bit of help. How? <laughs> how does he do that? Like this? Stupid thing, Birch, you stupid thing. You, you, you muddled up the cards, you stupid man. And anyway, it's a slur. No, it's a slur, the idea that I can only remember things by having them written down on cards. Go on, ask me a question. Right, OK. What is the capital of France? Hang on, who's that at the door? <laughs> you called, Will? What's it to you what I'm called? <laughs> uh, I wasn't quite my man. I was just, uh, you know, we've all been talking here in the video. The people at Crinkley Bottom want to ask you the question, why have you given up the captaincy of England? 
Well, actually, I, I just... I preferred something a little bit more permanent, and I was wondering if there's any chance of a game for, uh, for your team. What? For, for the crinkly bottom 11? Well, it's meant to be 15, actually. <laughs> Small boy. That explains why they're not doing very well. But look, I'll tell you what. I could probably, I'm not without influence around here, I could probably arrange for you to be captain. Well, no, I wouldn't actually want to be captain, because uh, I know a really good guy who would. Oh, who's that? Well, you know him, actually. He's a, he's a great player. Big, fat, round, pink guy with a massive <laughs> ball. Yeah. Few spots, funny eyes. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's his name? Gareth Chilcott. <laughs> I can't let you go. I can't let you walk away. England's youngest ever rugby captain, the most successful rugby captain around the world. <laughs> no, Crinkley Bottom wanted to pay tribute to Will Carling. one trophy that he likes to keep quiet about because he's got a gotcha in his trophy cabinet. Yes, he met Mr. Blobby. This is what happened. Would you, would you mind doing, doing that? It's just that process again. The blobby of holding out, but with a real rugby ball, because that looks weird on the monitor to me. Blobby ball. But we freeze the action there because this is going to be the grab a grand question for this week. What happened next? Did Will kick Blobby? Or did Blobby kick Will? Or did the ball burst? Here are the all-important numbers that could have you involved at the, the opera tonight. It's 0891 If you think the will kick Blobby, put a two at the end. If you think the blob kick will. And if you think the ball burst, you need to put a three at the end. We've got to grab a grand. Grab a grand. Up, up, up. <laughs> I'm the milk tray man. <laughs> Thank you. How do we get out of this? <laughs> so, the message goes out. There is someone here in the great house who deserves a special mention. Yes, come over. Come over here. Let's come and meet some people. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Maybe you wouldn't mind it. <laughs> do you think the roof lifts in <laughs> What a terrible bag. Look at that awful <laughs> bag. Uh, hello. Oh, they're all thinking, how far is he coming up here? <laughs> Actually, no, no, it's all right. I oh, hello. hello. <laughs> oh, you're horrible. <laughs> no, you see, it's her. Fine. Yeah, it's her. I'm it's, Den it's Denise Curry. Hello, Denise. Mm -hmm. Hello, it's nice to see you. Very nice to meet you. And next to you is your sister, Sandra, yeah. who I've <laughs> spoken to, but I've never met. So, hello, Sandra. Hello. I'll just shake hands with you, because Sandra was a star of NTV recently. Denise, you're a naughty lady, and we just want to prove the point that you're never, ever safe on the house party, because you set her up for NTV, didn't you? And the, uh, the story was quite interesting because Sandra agreed to send £50 to Comic Relief if she could have a telephone conversation with Wet Wet Wet. But she never got round to actually sending the £50. Uh, she bought a coat instead. <laughs> now, that, that was the plot that Denise suggested. And so we went over to the Meadow Hall shopping centre where they both were and uh, we managed to get this confession out of Sandra. Well, I'm sort of on my way to the bank, cheque book in hand. Yeah. Honestly. Right. And I sort of passed a sort of show up with a sail on yes. and bought a jacket instead. Yeah. <laughs> now... <laughs> Thank you for telling us that. Thank you. Yeah. Wait! Wait! Thank you for telling us all about that. Sandra, you've paid the £50, haven't you? <laughs> Even after all of that, 
the £50 still remains unpaid to comic relief. <laughs> the audience, yes he does, there he is, and he sprinkles foam all around the audience, they get very excited and somewhat wet. That is how it's done. Is that your kennel outside? No, it's the dogs. Yeah, that's what I meant. Well, I'm from the Crinkly Bottom Pet Food Company. And are you from... Are you from... <laughs> are you familiar with our chirpy, chunky, cheeky, chappy, meaty morsels variety? <laughs> dogs love it. I've heard it's very good. Very, very, very tasty. Well, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. I've heard. I've only heard. I've just heard. Oh, well. Well, it seems that that particular... That particular brand is selling very well in this specific area. Oh, really? You haven't been eating it yourself, have you? No! 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 Here! There's one very simple test we can do. What? 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 Fetch! Sorry about that, Noel. I owe you an apology. Yes, indeed. Well, here you go. You can have your paper. Good boy. <laughs> there is only one person watching this piece of film at the moment. That is our star of NTV, and we can see him now in Luton. That is Trevor. That's Trevor Thompson. He's in Luton, and he is going to get a huge shot when he realises he is involved in the last story that's coming up in the Crinkley Bottom Observer. Play along, he's no idea. Good news. Good news. Good news. Good news for you now. OK, so... OK, good news! Yeah, very good news, in fact. The crink... Uh, the... <laughs> <laughs> the Crinkly Bottom Fate will be held on June the 23rd this year. If wet, it'll be held the day before. <laughs> oh, so I've got a prize-winning cucumber. That's, uh, <laughs> That's not news. It's just a bit of gossip, actually. <laughs> uh, oh, unforgettable news! <laughs> the Crinkly Bottom Amnesiac Society has decided to change its name. After much deliberation, they've decided to call themselves the Crinkly Bottom Amnesiac Society. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you get it after that. <laughs> Stupid news! That's <laughs> if all the rest of it wasn't as well. <laughs> the Crinkly Bottom International Boat Show was abandoned this week when someone pulled the plug out of the bath. Now, a bit of additional, <laughs> bit of additional news for you. Crinkly Bottom hairdressers Curl Up and Die had a visit from boxing promoter Don King. They put him under the hairdryer and it short-circuited. He was delighted. <laughs> and, uh, and there's a picture here. There's a picture here. Picture there of Don King. There's a picture there of Don King under the dryer shortly after shortly after that happened. There is Don King uh, there, ladies and gentlemen, when he was recently in Crinkly uh, Bottom. And actually, there's a very interesting uh, piece. We've got uh, first time ever male underwear advertised in the Crinkly Bottom Observer. Male underwear in the Crinkly Bottom Observer. Hello. Hello, Tre Hello, Trevor. <laughs> Hi, Trevor. <laughs> Hello, Trevor Thompson in Luton. <laughs> I'm lost for words. Oh, um, that's a relief. We've had a run of very bad words, so just behave, please. <laughs> OK, hi, how are you doing? Oh, wonderful now. Yeah, you, you look good in them underpants, <laughs> didn't you? It was a long 
time ago. What? <laughs> oh, Trev, I know quite a bit about you. You're very keen on Crime Watch, I believe. <laughs> yeah. You're a bit of a sleuth. You like following the old clues. Yeah. And you like keep fit. Well, I try to keep fit. Yeah. 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 You've got a fairly unconventional way of keeping fit, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I exercise by. Yes, that, that's conventional. It's the rest of it that interests us. <laughs> right, you're a sleuth. You like clues. Put the drink down. The first thing you've got to find in your house, here's the clue. What would a pirate make you walk? Go and find it. Oh, where's he going? Oh, I wasn't expecting him to go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Where's he going? What? Oh, Mr. Got Got it, right. He's got his plank, right. OK. What's short, purple and a pear? Ha, oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Don't you wave that thing at me. What do you mean? Come on. What? <laughs> oh, we're going upstairs now, all right. <laughs> what does he mean, no way? Oh, he's... There they are. That's <laughs> Okay, here's your next one. You've no idea the spectacle when you get in this plastic receptacle. Yeah, have you found? Yeah, hello. Did you hear that third clue? No, I didn't. That was Okay, you've no idea the spectacle when you get in this plastic receptacle. <laughs> He's trying to play this down. Is that is that your wife who's giving the clues out? I'm going to get used to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What do you do in your sleep? Now, careful how you answer this. And if you dream, what would you call the CD? Dream? Yeah. What's the title of that? I don't know. I only play it. I don't listen to it. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I've built a career DJing on the radio on that basis, actually. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> now, come on. Where is it? Go and find it. I know more about your house than you'd really want me to know. Look, there's a blobby CD there. There's a blobby CD. Has he got the new blobby got video? Blobby mirror upstairs. All right. Now, what do you have to pedal fast to go nowhere? No, Trev. Trev. It's gone. It's gone. It's outside. To the front door, Trev. To the front door. <laughs> there it is. Now, Trev. You're going to have a few moments just to get yourself sorted out, and then we're going to come can't back. Can't hear you, no. At, you can't hear me. Can't hear no. Can oh, you turn you, it out? You can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can't hear you, no. Well, <laughs> I'm shouting. I'm shouting as loud as I can. I can hear you. I can hear you. Trey, look. I only want you to say I'll come back in a minute, and we'll find out what that cocktail of peculiar things <laughs> will do no. for you. Oh, oh, mate. I can't stand the play. <laughs> he, can't, he can't hear me. I can't understand the kid downstairs, but I better go down there. Wait till we all get home. Yeah. It's Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, how are you? Fine. <laughs> this is where the nightmare begins. He's great. But I can't understand a word he says. <laughs> and it all began with me foolishly saying, what do Mum and Dad do when they want a good time? Can you follow this? My dad took the steel point se my Sega machine with his games. <laughs> <laughs> and um, my mum's doing stills watching Taylor. So my mum watches some he tells me good and I'm watching with my mum, right? And then the argument begins. <laughs> Last night, I was sitting watching Bob Rogers. So I could do the stairs and watch Bob Rogers doing the stairs. Because I want to play Sega. <laughs> and I say, I won't like that. So I had to get Frankie round and obviously ask Frankie the question, does he understand his own son? <laughs> <laughs> we, were, uh, we were on holiday last year in Spain. I'm a good friend of a police sergeant from Liverpool. 
and they could not understand the word Kevin said. They thought it was Rabsi Nisbet's son. <laughs> Mum, can you follow all that? <laughs> no. No? no. Okay. Next, I asked him, <laughs> what would you do if you were Prime Minister? Did he say, resign? <laughs> Did he say, get that woman who used to do it back? <laughs> get into the retail sector? Or did he have some other piece of advice? Oh, it must have been something else. What would you do if you were the Prime Minister? I'd make sweetie shops everywhere. Sweetie shops. <laughs> Uh, about five rows of sweetie shops, right? Then another five with toys, then another five with sweets. We show market sweets, sweets, toys, toys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'd go and buy some more. <laughs> oh, yes. Well, it's prize time. OK? The questions you're getting, there are five of them, are all about Scotland. So we have three experts here. You may work as a team. If you think that you're only going to get one right, or indeed none, take the red one. If you think you're going to get between two and three, it's yellow. Four and five questions right. You can take the green, and the prizes correspond with the numbers. What are you going for? Do you think you'd get all five right on Scotland? Five questions, does it? Yep, five. Would you get five right? He thinks you'll get five right on Scotland. What do you call the skirt-like garment worn by men? Yes? A kilt. Yes. <laughs> what sound do bagpipes make? You going to make the sound? Mm. That'll do. In the poem Tam O'Shanter, to what does Cutty Sark refer? <laughs> no? No. No, it's the dress that the witch is wearing. Oh. Is Scotland north or south of Watford? <laughs> no. Kevin? North. North. No, I was, just, I was just thinking to myself. That wasn't a question. <laughs> Here's the fourth question. What do you call the monster who lives in Loch Ness? Oh, what? Nelly. <laughs> Nelly? <laughs> Come on, you're meant to be a team here. Nessie, what's the name for the drink that comes in whiskey bottles? Whiskey! to stay in a top hotel and see the West End show. Yes, you're going to get a trip all the way from Scotland to London. You can stay in a top hotel, go and see a West End show. Well done, you got that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and what was the prize that you asked for, Kevin? You wanted a video machine and we're going super generous. Oh, there nice. is your video <laughs> machine. Enjoy the West End. Have a great night. Yes. Love to Scotland. I'll, I'll say what I was going to say again in a minute. <laughs> Just a neighbour. Hello, Mr Edmonds. I'm Marjorie Hayhoe hyphen Stark. Is that your name or your email address? <laughs> Not very funny, but topical. <laughs> ah, well, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Mrs. Yes, uh, uh, my Mrs. friends call me Marjorie. Oh, oh Marjorie. Um, well, Mrs. Hayho, uh, think of that. is there some point to your visit? Um, yes, yes. Um, I'm led to believe you have some sort of centenary celebration coming up. Oh, yes, next Saturday it's the 100th party in this great house. You know, we're going to be dancing in the streets. We're going to have entertainers, street performers. We're going to have those big pickled gherkins. <laughs> and we're also going to have a big parade. Mm -hmm. Next Saturday, you say? Yep, yep. Cancel it. We can't cancel it. We can't. We can't cancel it. We can't. We've got nobility coming. We've got royalty coming. I mean, you should see, you should see the letter. Look here. Look. He makes it very, very clear that I'm on my way for a knighthood. Dear sir. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't mean you to be a knight. Whatever. We've got royalty coming. Look, read it. It says there will be an Austin princess and a Vauxhall Viscount. <laughs> it's from the local garage. No, it's not. It's not. This is an official letter from the Queen. I mean, for goodness sake, you'll be saying next, that's not a picture of the Queen. It's a stamp. <laughs> you, look, I'm terribly sorry, but you really will have to cancel this 100th party. There's a much more important local ceremony. Oh, come on. How could anything be more important than the 100th party? <laughs> 
festival of garlic. Oh. <laughs> what was that come round again? Yes, I was surprised too. It was your mother who reminded me. Uh, how did she remind you? She put the price of her clothes pegs up. Oh. <laughs> I mean, we don't like it, do we? We don't like this annual. <laughs> We don't like this annual festival of garlic. I mean, I mean, we, uh, why do we have to do it? <laughs> it's part of our heritage. If you ate more garlic, you'd live a lot longer. Oh. No, oh. you're right. It is a silly idea. <laughs> uh, please go ahead and have your party. Well, are you going? Are you going to come? Are you going to be with us? I'd rather scrape barnacles off the seawall with my nostrils. <laughs> I think she's coming. Let's go. Let's go back to number ten. No, not that number ten. The one in Luton, because uh, oh, he's, he's hidden away from me now. Has he got over the shock? Trevor Thompson is uh, our MTV star. Trev, come out. Come out of the house. Let's have a look at you. Right here he is. Hello, Trev. Hello, uh, no. Yeah, hello, Trev. Hello. Let's go. Trev, are you going to explain this or am I? This is a long time ago. I don't do this anymore. Come on, what do you do to keep fit? Well, I pedal on my bike and I push my stick up and down. Well, I don't know, just get a good sweat on. Hence the bag. You put a bin liner on to sweat more? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that hurt for? Trev? Yeah, it just speeds up. Saves me <laughs> another ten minutes on the bike. <laughs> <laughs> They're all out there, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mount up on your bike. Let, let's have a look. We've got to see this in action. Here it is. <laughs> I bet the day was quite pleasant until today. We've got your music! Oh, no! Trev, take it away. <laughs> Just you know. Yeah. <laughs> What he doesn't realise is that we've gone away and he's going to... He's just going to... We're just going to leave him there for a little while while he goes on like that and then we'll go back and see him in a bit. on Grab a Grand when Will Carling met Mr Blobby. Who kicked who? We can now show you what happened to see whether or not you were right. Yeah, it's just that process again. The blobby ball. Holding out, but with a real rugby ball, because that looks weird on the monitor to me. Blobby ball. The blobby ball. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Will kicked Blobby there. And all the people who got that absolutely right, there they all are, scrolling away. Can you see that? You just, just come in as close as you can. You see, look, right there they are, all scrolling away. Right, good. You have their lovely stuff. Uh, <laughs> his mum will be pleased. Now, I've stopped it at Nairn. Aha! We're going to go up there and see John. John Stewart. Uh, and I wonder what he's going to do with the money. Da -da 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 -da. Hello. Hello, John. Hi. Hi, how are you? Fine. Oh. 
Oh, have you had a rotten day? <laughs> what have you been doing today, then? Nothing. Nothing at all? Nothing at all, no. What, you've just been sitting in bed all day? No, I went shopping, that was all. You went shopping? Yeah. Uh, were, were you dragged out by a female companion? Yeah. <laughs> was this the... Was this the wife just dragged me out shopping? Yes. Yes. Oh, well, no wonder you're fed up, then. So what are you going to spend the money on, then, when you win it? Uh, I don't really know. Oh, you don't know? No. You care? No. Are you interested in winning any money? Aye. Aye. Which world-famous showbiz event takes place in Los Angeles on Monday? Oh, I'm not oh, come on, you've got to do better than that. Yeah. They get little statues and things. They get statues. No, all right. The Oscar. What? The Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> Love out of a haggis. Which, which notorious punk band announced this week that they've reformed? The Sex Pistols. Yeah, and who beat Wimbledon 3-1 to go through to the FA Cup semi-final? I don't know. You've got Chelsea. no idea? It was Chelsea. It was Chelsea. You got 40 seconds there. It's just what we helped you a lot with the Oscars. <laughs> Would you mind hanging on a bit? No, no. Will that be all right? all right? I'm paying for the call, so don't worry about that. <laughs> um, well, he's a barrel of laughs, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he's going to win a load of money. And, oh, yeah, I'm just sort of sure. Oh, look. Let's have a look at Trevor. He's in Luton, and he's still on his bed. <laughs> Going. <laughs> Hello, are you still fed up? No, I'm not fed up. No. No, 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 no. I'll be back with you in a little while. This will make you laugh. It's very funny. She was baffled. Baffled throughout it. Susan George gets a gotcha! Yeah! It's a very ag well, uh, yes. aggressive body language. Yes, it is. I'm sort of getting ready for anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was an avalanche, wasn't it? It was an absolute avalanche. The daft things went on, and you didn't really sort of object to it at all. Did I not? No, you made me feel rotten, actually. I have to be honest, at the end of it, because we did have that dinner well, with friends and, and with your husband, where we had that dinner where you said you'd never get me and all that stuff. Mm, I think I it was do. an avalanche. The programme is called Time of Your Life and it's a, it's a fictitious programme. It's where we ask a very well-known person to select a year. Susan chose the year of 1972 as being of special significance. We then built a social history uh, around her memories and, and, and everything was a lie. Everything was a complete lie. There was a fight in the studio. One, but you were wonderful. Was I? You were, and, I, and what really got me going... No, you, <laughs> you were wonderful. Can I say this? <laughs> What really got me going was the fact that I would never have believed that you would have been interviewing me in a gotcha Oscar. I think that's what, I mean, it doesn't mean I wasn't the most ridiculously gullible individual yeah. in the world to have done it and gone along I don't think it. I was that good. Yeah. I mean, but, but, the, but the face we've got to look out for is the one associated with Lionel Blair, because Lionel's come in as everybody's friend over the last few series of Time of Your Life, and the people hadn't met him or known him. Just look at these reactions that Lionel got in the past. The moment he walks in, Lionel Blair. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Lionel Blair. Yeah. All the way from Sydney in Australia. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Lionel Blair. <laughs> so when, when Lionel turns up for Susan, just watch her face very closely. There's also a couple of actors who, who have aged incredibly since 1972. Let's take you now, with moral dilemmas and all, to Susan George's time of your life. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Susan George. We've already identified it's 1972 that you've selected. We'll swiftly <laughs> move on for the moment to one of the biggest news stories of the summer of 1972. It involved a bucket. It has compost in it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to show you the footage of this quite extraordinary moment in television history, and we're going to freeze the action, and I'm going to ask you, 
what you think happened next. With me is the Right Honourable John Elkington, Under Secretary for Roads. Also joining me today is the leader of the local opposition group, Flowers Not Freeways, Marcus Rogers. Uh, well, I hardly think this hippie is... You can't mess, mess around with the rooms, man. With all this rubbish about rooms mess around and with the ancient ley lines. This country I mean, needs I can't roads, not rooms. I cannot handle I mean, He's okay, talking okay. about ancient ley lines and roads. What about these... Lay off our ley lines! lines. Oh, I can't handle this television business. Rumble. I was supposed to tell you that, wasn't well, I? Well, you should have stopped the action. I thought you should have, so I could tell you about the <laughs> What do you want me to do? Lie? Right, we're going to stop the action right there. Susan, what do you think happened next? Well, I think he had to dump the bucket or whatever it was over the chap's head. <laughs> Did he do that? Very good. And all these years on, we've got the two of them, John Elkington and Marcus Rogers. Oh. <laughs> <I've> <laughs> <What'd you say? laughs> Doesn't time fly? Eh? <laughs> Marcus, have you changed very much well, since well, being? Well, a no, I mean, I, I think uh, it's absolutely outrageous. I, I, mean, this ha I mean, I know this happened twenty years ago, and I mean, I mean, all right. I mean, I changed, ex ex but, you know, with my exterior. But you, I mean, the policy, the policy. Where the you, where you, you live you now? Oh, where yeah. you <laughs> live now? The environment is so much better. No, no, no. no I, I, you can't I, listen to somebody else's argument. <laughs> what do you think of the show so far? <laughs> This gentleman is your biggest fan. He's in our audience this evening. He is Roger Watton, and he has a message for you. <laughs> You're Susan George. You're Susan George. Lovely, what a huge compliment, and I thank you for it. As always, we're now going into the time warp wardrobe. <laughs> Did they tell you about this? No. Ah. <laughs> no, why not? Has anybody told you anything about this? Oh. Right. <laughs> I think we're here. 1972. Ah. I promised you at the very beginning of this <laughs> time of life, that we would have uh, somebody as a surprise guest. Mm -hmm. And I'm told that this is someone who is very, very dear to your heart, Mr. Song and Dance himself, Lionel Blair. <laughs> So how long have you known each other? Oh, a very long time. But the, this one memory I have, do you remember we did the last pantomime that appeared on television? It was Cinderella. That's yes. Right. Yes, <laughs> yes, 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 indeed. Yes. And then you, as you walked down to take the Who's Best, your panties fell to the floor. <laughs> and you took a graceful curtsy. And the audience <laughs> cheered. Yes, Lionel Blair, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very great to see you. There was a programme in 1972 in America called <gasps> The Dating Game. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> yes. And well known people were invited on. Correct. Members of the public. That's right. That's right. Given and the opportunity 
to take the well-known person on a date. Correct. And I didn't go. Why not? Well, because they said that I didn't have to go on the date. It was all sort of for the look of things. And I felt terribly sad for the man. His name was Joe. I remember that very well. And he was absolutely lovely. But no, I didn't go on the date. He went with somebody else, though. I'm sure he had a wonderful time, because he took somebody else that he'd like to have taken. Why? <laughs> Stop it. My research says his name wasn't Joe, because through the production company, we traced him, the man that you never went on a date with. Oh, no. And tonight, right after this show, we've arranged for you to go to a top London oh, hotel... Oh, please! ...for dinner <laughs> with... She hasn't seen him for 23 years, and she never went on a date with him. Ladies and gentlemen, from the States, Rick Rudin. <laughs> Waited 23 years for this. <laughs> I cannot believe my and, and Lionel Blair. <laughs> well, oh, uh, bless your so, heart. Oh my God! I can't believe it. Rick, I, yeah, this show was a fix, wasn't it? Look, I, I, I got a, I, I got a little bit of a confession to make. I guess. Um, is, is this something we can broadcast it? <laughs> yes. And and uh, when when they said to me, you know, uh, you're the guy that was on the dating game, and, and I said, yeah. Uh, but I wasn't really, I just... But it was an opportunity to be here with Susan George. I thought... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been on the dating game? No. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you'll join me at the same time next week when we'll have another big star name on Time of Your Life. For now, remember, it is right now that Susan George will always remember. Gotcha. And I could tell how moved you were, and therefore, once again, with a tribute, is Roger Watton. Oh, my God! <laughs> so... ridiculously nice to him once before. I'm so sorry. I enjoyed that. Did you? Yes, I did. Thank goodness for that, Susan. <laughs> George, gotcha. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, the money's going. I've got to go and do some money stuff. Grab a grand. Scoring England Test cricketer, remember 1990 against India, 333 runs. Essex and England, Grant Gooch! Grant! <laughs> we're, going, we're going to the opera. Okay. We're, we're off to the opera because uh, last week, well, it was very, very silly. We had grab a grandpa and he got stuck in his shed and whatever, but we thought for you, Grant, we thought something more cultural. Because <laughs> it's not fivers that he's going for, it's only 40 seconds for John Stewart in Nan. But we have right. the three tenors! <laughs>
is difficult. Here, I'll stick him in there. Right, that is difficult. I don't know how many we managed to do for John there. What do we cover? He's come out at 1,500 pounds. I don't know how that could possibly have come out of that. <laughs> do that. You know, the machine weighs and counts the money faster than any bank can. It truly is a miracle. How do they do it? I don't know how they do that, you know, because the machine whatever. But I'll tell you something, I know exactly how they organise this little oh, sort of trip see. around so that you can have a look at the house. The whole house? The whole house, yes. <laughs> Absolutely, everywhere she see everything. She will see everything. Say. How did I do that? What, you mean after all that? You yeah, still don't know how it happened? Look. What a silly lady. <laughs> next week. Don't miss it. Stars wall to wall. Joan Collins joining us on the 100th house party next week, live from Crinkly Bottom. We've also got a number cruncher going international. You could win the holiday of your dreams. NTV bigger than ever before. Could you be involved in it? And we've got a gotcha that I didn't tell you about because it's a multiple. It's the big, big party next week. Your invitation is here now. Good night.